On va commencer avec Hello, we're going to start with a picture taken from a NASA satellite seen from space, light at night that can be seen with satellites, and we see obviously a lot of light in urban areas, clearly in Asia, India, in Europe, and uh, Close to New York, there is really a lot of intensity. We can understand, therefore, the distribution of urban areas across the world. We don't see much light in Africa or Australia. If we were to make a comparison between this type of map with emission maps shown here, we would find a real, true correlation between the two. On this map, also, we can see areas uh, such as uh, Asia, India, Europe, uh, and the United States, where we have uh, the greatest share of uh, greenhouse effect gases emissions. And also, we see the transportation between those areas. We see the routes followed by uh, ships shipping everything we need for our economy and also the uh, routes followed by uh, airplanes transporting uh, tourists and passengers. If we make an assessment, a quantity assessment, we'll find that urban areas account for 53 to 87 percent of CO2 emissions uh, due to uh, energy. This is a substantial part of the emissions. If one should try to understand uh, the human share of uh, greenhouse effect gas emissions, it's essential to understand the functioning in urban areas. Now, this is a very good example of uh, CO2 emissions uh, from a, an American city, Indianapolis. Obviously, this is a characteristic of uh, North American towns, and we see one source of emissions in the area linked with energy production, a coal power plant producing electricity for the whole of Indianapolis and the surrounding area. Number three shows uh, emissions from the industry and the shopping malls, and in the in picture number four, we see also emissions uh, due to uh, residential areas and uh, house uh, heating. We also need external data, such as uh, the way energy is used, heating, and also vehicles should be counted because vehicles release um, CO2 and carbon monoxide. There, is, there are also statistics on waste, because uh, waste and garbage uh, play an essential role in gas emissions, especially methane. Now that we have had a look at CO2 emissions, we need to try and understand the impact of CO2 emissions in the atmosphere. On the left-hand side picture, we have a model made from a, a European map with concentration gradients in the atmosphere. The colors are red and yellow. Urban areas are visible, but not so much, whereas on the right-hand side, the modeling is made for a very specific uh, area, the Paris area. And in this case, we see the uh, blue plume showing uh, emissions from Paris, and this plume is going towards the southwest. The strength of the uh, plume is directly linked with the strength, or, or rather the quantity of emissions, and the direction is connected with the wind, the direction which the wind blows, or a number of other atmospheric conditions. To gain a better understanding, we can also have a look at this kind of picture, where we see concentration of an air mass upstream of the town, the air is clean, then it travels above the urban area, and during this trip, several emissions are gathered, coming from vehicles, coal plants, or house heating, 
And during this trip, there is a concentration of CO2 emissions, and downstream of the town, the air will be loaded with CO2. So we have a gradient of concentrations upstream and downstream of urban areas. How can we quantify the gradient? Well, in Paris, we're lucky because there is a uh, monitoring center. On the left-hand side, we see the network. Several sites, southwest and north, east of Paris, show us that if an air mass travels from northeast above Paris and southeast of Paris, we can measure the concentration of CO2 emissions thanks to the gradient. On the right-hand side, we see a, an infrared laser spectrometer, the kind of uh, equipment being used in the monitoring center using the uh, physical properties of CO2 molecules. CO2 molecules are capable of absorbing infrared rays and therefore the spectrometer will be able to read the infrared light contained in the molecule and measure the quantity uh, in relationship with the uh, CO2 concentration in the air. We then perform the modeling in order to be able to make measurements and combine the two. Here, for instance, we can compare predictions and measurements for a station very close to Paris. In red, we have the results from uh, concentration simulations, and in blue, we have concentrations observed, actually observed by the network. And we see that there is a good, con a good um, correlation during some periods, but there are times when there is an offset between the uh, predicted values and the measured value. Now, this is very important because when there is an offset, when the uh, predictions and the observations don't match, it means uh, that if observations are higher than, if predictions are higher than observations, it means that emissions have been overestimated in the model. At the bottom, we see a comparison between uh, predicted emissions and measured emissions and measured with our observation system. In, in white, we have the uh, simulation results and with the various colors, red, blue, and green. These are the uh, measurement results. And we see the differences. So this provides uh, averages that will help us understand uh, urban area emissions. But who really can uh, benefit from these studies? Well, researchers, because this is going to help them understand the CO2 cycle. And also because they will be able to understand uh, town emissions in uh, town networks. There are several towns working together to decrease their climate impact. There is a uh, climate plan in Paris to reduce uh, emissions by 30% in Los Angeles. There is also a similar plan, the Climate LA plan, in order to reduce emissions by 35% over the next 20 years. So this is a very active network connecting all these towns, and some towns are already developing uh, or implementing the climate plan. Until now, we have a network of approximately 5,000 towns across the world who really are implementing a climate plan. Unfortunately, what we still do not understand is whether in the future urban areas will help increase, decrease concentrations or much to the contrary will increase the emissions. Because as we can see from this picture, the urban population is increasing much more than we had thought in the past. Here we have expectations or forecasts for emerging countries where a uh, huge increase of uh, urban populations is expected, are expected. And we also have uh, the same figure for developed countries where the population living in urban areas is more or less stable and will remain stable for the next 20 years. If there are new urban areas in emerging countries, we need to understand whether living in town will help decrease the per capita emissions or whether, on the contrary, it is going to increase per capita emissions. Well, there are two scenarios, really. In 
If a very large town is built or if it exists and more people come and live in the town, this might lead to infrastructure problems, traffic jams, but it could also have an impact uh, because there is greater efficacy. It is easier to decrease uh, the impact of transportation if people use the underground, for instance, like in Paris. On the right-hand side, we see the red dots. This is a study where people believe that larger cities are going to be less green and will increase emissions, where some studies say that larger cities are greener, that if people live in town, there will be less emissions and it will help decrease the emissions. And if the, the curves cross, this means we're going to reduce emissions. This particular slide shows you the uh, pathway predicted for emissions in the future in urban areas. And we see that emissions are going to increase and unfortunately, the blue car curves are the most realistic predictions, business as usual, the status quo. National actions uh, will not be able to help us, but we could, we could add uh, the yellow stratum where cities are going to help. But only national plans and cities will not be sufficient to get us where we need to be, i.e. closer to the green dotted line. And the green dotted line is really where we would like to get in order to obtain uh, 450 ppm uh, emission decreases with a stable climate and a uh, controlled global warming, no more than 2 degrees Celsius.